again, good evening. Welcome to Glendale City Council meeting of January 14, 2020. This meeting is called to order. Uh, roll call is not necessary. If you could uh, mark all members are present. Uh, the next two items on the agenda are invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Our invocation tonight is gonna be delivered by David Toom from Bellevue Heights Church. Gentlemen, if you're wearing a hat, if it's appropriate, if you'd remove it, if everyone would please stand uh, with me, join in the invocation, and that'll be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, thank you for the city of Glendale, our people, our businesses, our schools. We give thanks for the great history of Glendale Father, the prosperity we are enjoying and the prospects of a great future. And tonight, Father, we give thanks for this governing body whose intention is to lead this city into that bright future of opportunity. Give each wisdom and discernment. May your highways and your high thoughts be downloaded into hearts and minds in order that decisions will be made and directions identified for the good of the people of Glendale and decisions that will bring delight to your heart, Father. Please hear our prayers, O Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Okay, next on the agenda is the approval, the consideration of minutes of December 10th, 2019 voting meeting. Council members, do you have any corrections or additions? Hearing none, can I get a motion to approve? Mayor. Mr. Aldama. Thank you, sir. Motion to approve the uh, meeting minutes of December 10th, 2019. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, vote nay. If your eyes have it, do you have it? The motion carries. Moving on to our boards, commissions, and other bodies. Uh, for those of you who are nominated tonight, please wait to come forward until the vice mayor uh, asks you to do just so. We have a very large amount of people that are going to be coming uh, uh, on boards and commissions tonight. So rather than read your names twice, I believe the vice mayor is going to call your names the first time. We'll vote, and then she'll ask you all in general if your name uh, was announced to come forward. So with that, vice mayor. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> and again, let me just explain. We've got up to 48 people who will be appointed to boards and commissions and other bodies tonight. I am going to read off all of the names in terms of a motion for the rest of council for their approval or disapproval. Pay attention. If, you, if I read your name and then the vote takes place, I am not going to read all 48 names again. I ask you to come up and stand in front of the dais and make sure you have your card with the oath of office on it and the mayor will then give you the oath of office, so pay attention. All right, here we go with the list. To the Arts Commission. Cookie Pe Peverini as chair for a term expiring 131-2021. Nicole Riley as vice chair for a term expiring 131-2021. To the Aviation Advisory Commission, Terry Armanian for a term expiring 131-2022. Larry Rovey for a term expiring 131-2022 and as chair for a term expiring on 131-2021. Quentin Tolby as vice chair for a term expiring 131-2021. To the Board of Adjustment, Brian Britton for a term expiring 131-2022. Kathy Cheshire for a term expiring 131-2022. And as vice chair for a term expiring 131-2021. Ermine Erm Ernie Zara as chair for a term expiring 131-2021. 
to the Citizens Bond Election Committee. John Froke is chair for a term expiring 131-2021. Lisa Baker as vice chair for a term expiring 131-2021. To the Citizens Transportation Oversight Commission. Chuck Jared for a term expiring 131-2022. John Fernandez for a term expiring 131 2022 and as chair for a term expiring 1 31 2021. Marie Nesfield for a term expiring 1 31 2022. Barbara Rose for a term expiring 1 31 2022. Jack Nyland as vice chair for a term expiring 1 31 2021. To the Citizens Utility Advisory Commission, Robin Berryhill for a term expiring 131 2022. Amber Ford for a term expiring 131 2022. David McGrew for a term expiring 131 2022. Jonathan Liebman as chair for a term expiring 131 2021. Ron Short as vice chair for a term expiring 131 2021. To the Historic Preservation Commission, Lillian Mickey Lund for a term expiring 131 2022. Sharon Wixon for a term expiring 131 2022. And as vice chair for a term expiring 131 2021. Timothy Quinn is chair for a term expiring 131 2021. To the Human Relations Commission, Barbara Lentz for a term expiring 131 2022. To the Industrial Development Authority, Howard McKenna for a term expiring 131 2026. To the Judicial Selection Advisory Board, Andrew Gould for a term expiring 131, 2023. Roy Whitehead for a term expiring 131, 2023. To the Library Advisory Board, Eva DeVu for a term expiring 131, 2022. Timothy DeVu for a term expiring 131, 2022. Karen Aborn for a term expiring 131, 2022. John Davis for a term expiring 131, 2021. Gary Johnson as chair for a term expiring 131, 2021. To the Municipal Property Corporation. John Jones for a term expiring 131 2021. Leland Peterson for a term expiring 131 2021. David Lecky for a term expiring 131 2021. Don Naffles for a term expiring 131 2021. Roger Schwerjohn for a term expiring 131 2021. To the Parks and Recreation Advisory Commission, Catherine Mowbray for a term expiring 131-2022. Stephanie June for a term expiring 131-2022. Christina Cadena for a term expiring 131-2022. Sam McConnell for a term expiring 131-2022. And as chair for a term expiring 131-2022. One. Gail, I'm going to mess up your name, Shavoni, for a term expiring 131 2022, and as vice chair for a term expiring 131 2021. To the Planning Commission, Vern Crow for a term expiring 131 2022, Warren Wilfong for a term expiring 131 2022. Gary Hirsch is chair for a term expiring 131 2021. Al Lennox is vice chair for a term expiring 131 2021. 
to the Public Safety Personnel Retirement System Local Police and Fire Boards. Charles Erickson is chair for a term expiring 131-2021 to the Risk Management Workers Compensation Trust Fund Board. Gary Deerdorf as chair for a term expiring 131-2021. Mayor, that concludes the appointments. All right, would you announce one more time because there was some people that walked in late uh, if if they're on the boards or commissions. All the names again? No, no, no. Just just explain to the people that came in that didn't hear the first time that right. uh, they'll need to come If up. there is anyone who came in late, who you, came tonight to be appointed to a board and commission, and you know you're appointed to a board and commission, after council takes this vote, will you come down with the other appointees in front of the dais to take the oath? Thank you. Okay, I do have a motion by the vice mayor. Can I get a second? Second. So I have a second from uh, Council Member Hugh to approve these uh, citizens to boards, commissions, and other bodies as read by Vice Mayor. All in favor, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed, vote nay. Here's your eyes have it. Do you have what that motion carries? Vice Mayor, if you'll wait till I get up there. Yes, sir. I'm not going to read them again. Will all of those people whose names I have read previously please come down to the dais to take the oath? Come on down. <clears throat> Just all line up in front of the dais here. Squeeze in if you have to. <laughs> Good. This is the point we get to change our minds. Sam. I ask one more time if they're supposed to be on a board. Or okay. Is there anyone else who is supposed to be on a board or a commission that came tonight specifically to take your oath? Is there anyone whose name I did not call or that I might have missed? If so, please do come down. Anyone at all? I see none, Mayor. Come on, come on around. Don't want to all, all fit in. Press. Squeeze in. There's plenty of room. Okay, so uh, we have a very large. Is this on? Okay, yeah. we have a very large group tonight, and I see there's quite a few people that aren't here that I know names were read. Uh, so if all of you, you have cards, uh, if you would all take your card, hold your right hand up and repeat after me. I'll make it easy for you, just repeat after me. I want you to say your own name, not my name, okay? So we'll start off with I, I. state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the constitutional laws of the state of Arizona. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of my office according to the best of my ability. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Can you get everybody in right there? Okay, well, let me let me turn around this time. Could you get me? <laughs> everybody, everybody look out towards the audience. We'll get a picture of everybody. Awesome. Thank you folks so much. Thank you.
All right, I, uh, there's a gentleman in the audience named Robert Weedman. I just need to know which, you, which, which item you wish to speak on, sir. The annexation of the property out uh, at Cotton Lake. Okay, I'm gonna make an announcement on that in just a second, so you, you may. Agenda, so I didn't know the number. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, at this time, I'd like to make the public aware that item number eight, item number eight has been pulled from tonight's agenda, it will not be heard. Also, item 28 was approved by this council during the December 10th, 2019 meeting. For those of you, if you're not familiar with item 28, that's the Glen Lakes. Uh, it was uh, agreed upon uh, December 10th voting meeting, provided that the developer agreed to the council's two uh, agreed amendments. The city was notified that the developer did in fact agree to the two amendments. There is no counter amendment, so this item has been removed from tonight's agenda. Uh, we won't be speaking uh, to it. If you're here and you wish to speak about that particular item at the very end of the meeting, you're welcome to stay and speak on that, but we're not gonna, it's not agendized, we're not gonna be talking about it, we're not gonna be voting on that tonight. So if, if, if you don't wanna leave, uh, you're welcome to leave. If you wanna stay in and speak on it, I, I can't take questions right now. If you wanna stay and speak on this item at the end, you're welcome to do that, okay? Uh, uh, as the chair, I'm moving uh, agenda item number 29, yes? Consent agenda first. What? Consent agenda first. We haven't done consent. Let me finish my announcement. Uh, as the chair, I'm gonna move uh, agenda item number 29 uh, up to be the very first one that we hear. We will hear that uh, uh, item number 29, and then we're gonna return to our normal agenda order uh, with the consent agenda items. Now I do have one consent agenda item uh, that I got a card that she wants to speak on, uh, and that would be Cheryl Capus, uh, and that's item number 14. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and do item 14 first. I'd like, I'd like a discussion on that. Um, and then uh, we're gonna invite uh, Cheryl Kappas to come up and ask her questions. So what are we doing? Resolution number R20-04, a resolution of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, regarding the disposition of city-owned real property. Mayor, members of the council here to provide staff report is Deputy City Manager Brent Stoddard. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, this item is the resolution on the property disposition policy that came to the council in a workshop in October. You then provided some feedback on that draft resolution. Um, we prepared those uh, that resolution and it is now on the voting meeting tonight for the council's adoption. With that, Mayor, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, we don't have any questions, but we do have a member in the audience that uh, wish to speak to that, Cheryl Kappas. I don't know, what number is it? You can pull that down some more. Yeah. There you go. Hi there, my name is Cheryl Kappas. I'm a business and property owner in Catlin Court. I'm the country maiden. I've been there about 13 years. And the reason why I would like to address this item tonight is I have listened very carefully to the workshops that was held discussing this. And first, I do wanna thank you very much for getting the workshop scheduled and working to develop a formal policy regarding city-owned properties, which I had requested back in September when we were busy celebrating the one-year anniversary of the backdoor deal or presumably backdoor deal according to some newspapers. My concern with the policy that is about to be adopted is it does not appear to stop completely or close those loopholes. It allows unsolicited offers and when you have unsolicited offers come in, it gives a lot of uh, lack of transparency to the public. So we have no way of knowing really where the offer come from, when did it appear, whose friend could it be? It just kind of uh, lacks transparency from the get-go and leaves you open to 
situations that are not in the best interest of the citizens of your city. When I went back and did a little bit of uh, research, in my opinion, you should just strike the offer of unsolicited offers or take a different approach. If you have property for sale, then let's just put it all on the market. Let's identify every piece of property that you are willing to sell today. Let's get it all listed with the broker and have it all out there. So then from the get-go, it is going through a formal, visible process where you have an opportunity for anybody to bid on that product and you will then serve your citizens in the best manner because it will be an open and transparent sale from day one. Lack of an open and transparent sale leaves room for uh, I'll just say, <laughs> again, lack of transparency, and that lack of transparency is not in the best interest of your citizens. And the second thing that I, I know I didn't talk so much about it, but it's come to my attention just trying to watch the overall sales these days. It's not clear that we know why the property is being sold other than it's there and we're not using it. It wasn't set as a priority or, um, when you went through the buildings and you assigned a critical nature to each of the buildings, which ones should be kept, which ones sh could be sold. And the end result is, and where does the sales revenue go from that sale? I'm Cheryl, not sure. I need to, I need to keep it to that one item. That's that's. Well, it's related to the policy that you're about to adopt. So I'm just saying that I think there's still work to do on the policy. If you haven't identified where the sales revenue will go from that sale, then it's. Um, perhaps uh, an opportunity to improve it. And then if you're not providing a good transparent uh, process for selling city-owned properties, then you have still some work to do. And I would suggest or ask that you would kindly consider removing offers that are unsolicited. Either have it for sale or don't. You shouldn't take unsolicited offers because you are leaving yourself open to another backdoor deal. And I don't think that's good for the city, mm -hmm. for representing you, or for you representing your citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, folks, also tonight, item number 21. Uh, is not, all we're doing is annexation. We're not doing anything on item 21. We're not approving a business. We're not anything other than just annexation. That's it. So uh, if, you, if you are concerned about that, again, that's all we're doing is an annexation. We're not approving any businesses tonight. So if you're here for that item, uh, I don't know as though uh, what you're concerned about is, is something to be concerned with tonight. Certainly in a future meeting, uh, you may want to come back and voice your opinion on that. But again, tonight it's only Four. annexation, that's it. Mayor? Yes. Just so I'm clear, if it's the item I'm thinking of, we have a public hearing about a proposed annexation. We won't actually be acting on the annexation tonight, will we? No. Thank you. So again, if you're here for that item, uh, you really don't need to worry about it tonight. I, I can't take questions right now. Item 21, yes, sir. Item 21, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the 303 that everybody's concerned with, the truck stop. Yes. So that's the best I can tell you right now. We are not approving that tonight. Okay? So we're going to go back to... Uh, Mayor? Yes. I have a question on the, um, the agenda item we're on, disposal. Can I, is that okay to proceed? With, with no. item 14? Yes, sir. No. no? I don't think so. Item 14. I have a question on number 14. I can't ask As far it. as I'm concerned, you okay. can. All right. Thank you. Um, I don't think so. For the city manager and, and for the city attorney, under unsolicited offers or in, inquiry, um, under A, it reads, upon receipt of the offer, the city manager shall notify the council that an offer has been received. I thought in the workshop, we all agreed that 
that when you received that, that you would let us know in a public meeting, but you wouldn't divulge the name of the individual or the company, and that never got changed on here. So you were gonna bring to us simply, as you, you've done on two other occasions that you wanted to let us know, but in a public meeting? So Mayor, Council Member Aldama, so we, that the new A um, should represent that, uh, that process, that uh, upon the receipt of the offer that, that the manager would notify the council that an offer has been received. Obviously he would need to use, he would at his discretion share what information that he felt comfortable sharing at that point. And that would be at the time that he received it. And so just as he did a few meetings ago, that would be the step that would take place. Thank you so much, if I may continue. Uh, um, it, I agree that we mentioned that, but we also put in that it would be in a public meeting, so it specifies where the city manager would, would make that announcement. We're not asking to divulge the name of the business or the individual, but just in a public meeting. You've done it the last few meetings, so it's no different, but it's not written in here. So I'm asking the council if they'll consider just writing in a public meeting. I know we got consensus on that, it just didn't make it on here. So Mayor and Council Member Aldama, so I think that would need to be an amendment that you would need to make from the dais and go through the, the, the proper uh, parliamentary procedure to get that amended on, onto the, the policy. Mayor, then I'd like to make an amendment, and so how, how would I do that just upon, upon the vote just prior to it? Uh, we're still on just that one item, yeah. Okay. Um, if I can refer to the uh, city attorney, what is the appropriate way to add that amendment of the word public in under A? Uh, mayor and council members, when making the motion for approval, if it's the prerogative of the individual making the motion, that they would so notate that they would move to approve with an amendment which should include the word public in subsection A. <coughs> Thank you, if I may, Mayor. Um, I, I just want everybody to know that this item took quite a long item time to get here, but I, I am very satisfied and, and very happy that uh, the council has brought it this far. It is yet to be approved, but the fact that it got here and it's here in front of us today speaks volumes about uh, how we dispose of our property. And so I, I'm, I'm really happy that it's here today. I, I hope that it mm -hmm. passes and I hope that the subsection yeah, right. amendment is as well. But uh, I, I want you to know it, it was a long time coming, but it's here today, so. Okay, so all the council's clear on what we're doing. We're talking about item number 14, resolution R20-04. Councilmember Tomachoff. So we're talking about item 14 under unsolicited offer or inquiry. Section A to read, I just wanna make sure I understand what we're talking about. Upon receipt of the offer, the city manager shall notify the council uh, at a public meeting that an offer has been received. The, okay, that's what you're asking. Yeah, for. okay. if I may. Um, upon receipt of the offer, the city manager shall notify the council in a public meeting that an offer has been received, period. I hope that clarifies. No, it's considered, a, I mean, yeah. Okay. You good with that? Is a motion? Uh, Mayor Council, I understand it. I, it, it. I would need your direction now in, in terms of if there would like to be a motion to amend um, the language as is, you could entertain a motion to amend and then you would take a motion on um, the event, take a vote, you would actually take a vote on the yeah, amendment. My, my, the my, amendment. I was wanting to make sure you get with the verbiage. My understanding is that was your motion. Is that correct? It, it was not, Mayor, but I can do it now. Okay. Uh, Mayor, I'd like to uh, amend item number 14, R20-04, unsolicited offers subsection A to have the word public inserted. inserted. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion. Uh, do we have a second? Second. I have a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Mayor, point of order, if I may, just to make sure we're clear on the record. Go ahead. Um, the amendment shall be that um, under unsolicited offer inquiry, under subsection A, capital A, upon receipt of the offer, the city manager shall notify the council in a public meeting 
that an offer has been received. So the change will be in a public meeting. That is correct. With that, I'll okay, defer that's, to you. That's for noted as a second, correct? That's fine. Okay, so you've heard the motion, you've heard the second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, okay, we're voting on the, on the, uh, the amendment. On the right, so all in favor of the amendment, vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Here's the amendment passes. Okay, so now uh, this particular item as amended, uh, can I get a motion as amended? We'll think. Mayor? Go ahead. I motion to approve as amended item number 14, R20-04. Second. I have a motion and a second discussion on that. Hearing none, uh, roll call vote. Actually, let's not do a roll call vote. Let's just do a voice vote. Uh, all in favor? Yep. Well, go ahead. I just I looked down to, there and you weren't doing anything. I, I wanted to address the uh, citizens' concern regarding the, the. I think we've addressed the uh, issue of, of unsolicited that is now going to be a public uh, meeting and that that the whole world is going to know about it. Um, and on the uh, other issue you had about the money, you know, it's going to be going into general fund. And so, uh, it, but it, it will be, it will not be available for that year's spending. It will have to go and be voted on by this council with public input uh, during our budget process. So we can't, we can't budget and say where that money's gonna go to when we sell the property. That would be outside the budget process. And so we have to have a budget process that we follow, but that money will be, be put, be available mm -hmm. for the next budget cycle. Cause it isn't budgeted in the current cycle that it's being sold in. So the next year, it would be included in the budget cycle, and then you can then decide where that money goes. But you can't pre-design pre where that money's gonna go in the current budget, because that would not be appropriate. So I just wanted to clarify that, thank you. Okay, Mr. Phelps. Mayor, members of council, just a, one clarifier on that, uh, and I'll use the example of the Top Golf site. The Top Golf property site was owned by the Water Services Division, and they used Water Services Division monies to acquire. So, in those cases where the enterprise fund has acquired the property, the sale um, by statute would go back into that particular fund. If it was a general fund acquired property, uh, Council Member Malnar is absolutely correct. It goes back into, just basically into our checking account and then either through a, um, an additional authorization to expend uh, by a vote of the council or through the next budget process is when it'll be dealt with. Okay, so you all, <coughs> Heard the motion, you've heard the amendment, you passed the amendment. Uh, we've got a motion and a second on the, it as amended. Uh, all in favor, vote aye. 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 Any opposed, vote nay. Here's ayes have it, do you have it? That does pass. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and uh, um, bring up item number 29. Resolution number R20-05, a resolution of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, authorizing and directing the entering into of a development agreement with Mark Anthony Brewing, Inc. Mayor, members of council, here to provide staff report is Economic Development Officer Randy Huggins. Uh, thank you, Mr. Phelps. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This is a request for City Council to waive reading beyond the title and adopt a resolution authorizing the City Manager to enter into a development agreement regarding certain fees between the City of Glendale and Mark Anthony Brewing Incorporated, also known as MAB. MAB plans to construct a 916,000 square foot state-of-the-art brewing facility to accommodate market demand for White Claw Hard Seltzer. This brand is number one in the U.S. hard seltzer market and continues to grow in popularity, which has exceeded the company's current production capabilities. The new facility will employ more than 200 employees with an average wave wage above uh, $50,000 per year. Including in this facility will be the research and development headquarters, which houses 15 PhD food scientists to develop new products. MAB products include White Claw, Cayman Jack cocktails, and Mike's Hard Lemonade. The City of Glendale development team has been working diligently with MAB's executives and design teams to design and construct a quarter billion dollar a beverage production facility that utilizes advanced manufacturing technologies. The location selected is in the northern portion of the Wolf Logistics Industrial Park at the southeast corner of Reams Road in Butler. 
The development of this state-of-the-art facility will have an immense effect on the surrounding area as it will create the electrical power demand needed to expedite construction of the APS substation planned at the northeast corner of Reams Road in Olive. This development agreement will has no direct expense to the city. It would result in the city foregoing $750,000 of plan review permit and inspection fees for the issuance of a certificate of occupancy for MAB's new facility. Total direct revenue to the cities of Glendale are expected to reach approximately $5 million over 10 years from the development of this building. With a one-time sales tax of approximately $2 million in the first year alone, and the remaining $3 million in the form of property tax and ongoing sales tax paid over the remaining nine years. Additionally, MAB is building nearly $2 million in roadway and transportation improvements on Reams Road that will be dedicated to the city upon completion. These improvements will significantly enhance the farm grade roads in the area to meet the needs of MAB and all transportation in the region. Under state law and Glendale City Code, the city may allow a developer to construct and dedicate capital facilities, in this case it's transportation infrastructure, and credit the cost against transportation development impact fees. Uh, MAB agrees to construct and dedicate transportation infrastructure in excess of $1,057,000 which is the transportation fee typical to a project of this size. And MAB agrees to pay all other development impact fees, including police, fire, parks, and rec in full. A bond or similar security instrument will be held by the city until the roadway infrastructure has been inspected and accepted to the satisfaction of the city engineer. Staff recommends the proposed fee waiver and transportation development impact fee credit as they provide the ability to be responsive in a competitive market and support the creation of new ongoing revenue streams to the <coughs> quality economic development in our community. Mayor and Council, this concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Huggins. Council, any questions? Seeing none, can I get a motion on resolution number R20-05 or item number 29? Yes, Mayor. As this is in my district, I am very pleased to ask for the approval of resolution number R20-05, Mark Anthony Brewing Project. Thank you. Second. I have a motion uh, from the Vice Mayor, second Council Member Tomashoff, to approve the recommended action. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, roll call vote. Council Member Aldama, how do you vote? I have a comment, Mayor. Uh, you'd like to explain your vote? Yes, sir. Go ahead. If I may, thank you. I, I am extremely excited, as the vice mayor just mentioned, to have this um, development in Glendale. I am uh, thankful to our economic development team for uh, running through this project from conception to this very date. Uh, entire city of Glendale for getting this project here. Really excited. Um, 200 jobs that may or may not be in Glendale but drives the economic development in Arizona, and that is extremely important. So I am really happy uh, and excited, and I, I vote aye. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councilmember Hugh? Aye. Councilmember Melner? Uh, aye. Councilmember Tomachoff? Aye. Councilmember Turner? Uh, explain my vote. Go ahead. I've never had a white claw myself, but I have some friends who have, and they are very <laughs> excited about this. So, and with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Vice Mayor? Easy yes, may I explain my vote? <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure people realize, the public realizes how momentous a project this is to Glendale and to the West Valley. <clears throat> Excuse me. This project and the Red Bull project will act as a catalyst for further economic development in the area that this city has targeted as a center for job growth. We expect the area between the 303 and 115th Avenue to be specifically for jobs. Um, many people may not realize that, but 70% of our workforce leaves Glendale every day to go work someplace else in the valley. It's time that we turn that equation and that percentage around and that we approved more projects like this that will create jobs for Glendale residents. Um, this is a big deal, not just in the West Valley, but throughout the state and has been recognized by the state economic development community as a major project. Th and with that, I vote yes. Thank you, and I'll briefly explain my vote. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet with uh, the owner uh, when they first came to Glendale, not having a clue what it was that they were asking to meet about. 
uh, very, very hush-hush, and, and uh, they didn't want to it, it basically to get out. Uh, the first thing they'd asked at the meeting is, uh, we understand that you guys can do speed to market. In other words, uh, you're not going to delay things. You're going to push things along. Uh, you're going to make it available for us to get our permits and all those things quickly because uh, to them, that was the most important thing. They weren't as concerned about the price of the land. They weren't nearly as concerned about taxes. They weren't nearly as concerned about a lot of things, but getting that property bought, getting it to where we could get approval, to where they could start building was paramount. Uh, they're, they're doing something that I think is, is almost unheard of. Uh, from the time that this deal goes through to the time they plan on producing is about six months and it's well over a half a million square feet. And uh, it's a lot of jobs, uh, very, very, very aggressive. Uh, their product is so successful across the United States, they're losing millions of dollars every day in lost sales. And to them, every day that goes by without producing, they're, they're losing money. So I'm very, very proud that uh, we were able to make this thing happen for them. Uh, the one thing they were looking for was assurance from myself and from our city that we would do everything in our power to speed things along with permits. And I, I told them one thing, I said, the one thing City of Glendale can offer you no other city in Arizona can is the fact that you're not gonna be waiting on the city to get permits, you're gonna be waiting on your contractors to get the work done. And, uh, and that seemed to impress them enough. They have already broke ground out there. They took the chance that we would support this and they've already broke ground and started building, which is uh, uh, amazing that somebody would even take that chance, but they're that confident in Glendale. They chose to come to Glendale for their, for their, their very large uh, corporation. So I'm excited for it and I absolutely vote I. Wonderful. Okay, so consent agenda and consent resolutions. We'll now move on to just that. Items on the consent agenda are routine nature. Have they been previously studied by the city council at a workshop session? Now they are intended to be acted upon in one motion by this council. Consent agenda items are included in the agenda that's made available to the public in advance of these meetings. They're also available at the table at the very back of the room. Uh, and, and I wanna I want to announce one more time, if you came here to talk about the 303 project, the truck stop, if you came in after the announcement, we will not be talking about that tonight. We're only doing uh, annexation talking. We're not actually approving anything tonight. So if you're here for that, you don't have to stay. If you wanna talk about it, you're welcome to wait till the end of the meeting where we open it up for the public comment. If you came here for a boards or commission and you came in late, we've already done that. So if anybody came in late for boards or commissions, uh, if you wanna stick around, we can swear you in later, but uh, we've already done that. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on. Ms. Bauer, can you introduce item number 11? Resolution number R20-01, a resolution of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, ratifying the acceptance of a grant award in the amount of $8,000 from the Ben Roethlisberger Foundation at the Giving Back Fund through the Citizens Police Academy alumni of Glendale for the Glendale Police Department K-9 unit. Item 12, resolution number R20-02, a resolution of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, authorizing and directing the entering into of an intergovernmental agreement with the Arizona Department of Child Safety allowing the city to provide office and conference room space at the Glendale Family Advocacy Center for the purpose of investigations and to provide integrated services to children and families in Arizona. <laughs> Item 13, resolution number R20-03, a resolution of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, authorizing the entering into an airport development reimbursable grant agreement with the Arizona Department of Transportation Multimodal Planning Division grant number E0M2E and the acceptance and expenditure of grant funds in the amount of $280,000 for the acquire land for approaches project at the Glendale Municipal Airport. That concludes consent resolutions. Thank you. I have no speaker cards on any of those items. Council member, any items that you'd like to hear separately? Hearing none, uh, we'll proceed. Is there a motion to approve? Mayor, I move we approve the consent agenda items three through seven and nine and 10 and consent resolutions 11, 12, 13. Second. Okay, I have a motion from Council Member Hugh, a second from Council Member Aldama. Discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed, please vote nay. Peers, the ayes have it, do have it, that motion carries. We'll now proceed, uh, actually, we already done that. <coughs> Okay, bids and contracts. Ms. Bauer. 
Item 15, award of RFP 20-01, an authorization to enter into a professional services agreement with DV Towing LLC for towing services for the Glendale Police Department and City of Glendale Vehicles. Item 16, authorization to enter into an agreement and approve expenditure of funds to across the street productions for blue card online fire command training program for fire department personnel. Item 17, authorization to enter into a linking agreement with the Hertz Corporation for Vehicle Rental Services. Item 18, award of invitation for bid 20-16, an authorization to enter into an agreement with Don Sanderson Ford, Inc., doing business as Sanderson Ford for light duty vehicle preventative maintenance services. Item 19, authorization to enter into a professional services agreement with U.S. Peroxide LLC, doing business as USP Technologies for 27% hydrogen peroxide and other supply service and maintenance. Item 20, award of RFP 19-56, an authorization to enter into an agreement with NV5, Inc., for wet weather monitoring and stormwater sampling. That concludes bids and contracts. Thank you. Council members, any questions on any of the items? Hearing none, can I get a motion to approve item 15? Mayor. Mr. Melner. Yeah, I move that we approve uh, RFP 20-1 as presented. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Melner, second from the Vice Mayor to approve the recommended action. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Council Member Eldama, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Hugh, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Melner, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Tomachoff, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Turner, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Mayor, how do you vote? Aye. Chair votes aye. That motion carries. Can I get a motion for item number 15, 1-5? No, 16. 16. 1-6. Six. Six. Now I got doubled up here. 15. Okay, item 16, 1-6. Mayor. Go ahead. Motion to approve item number 16, authorization to enter into an agreement and, and approve the expenditure of funds to across the street productions for blue card online fire command training program for the fire department personnel. Second. second. I have a motion from Council Member Aldama, second Council Member Hugh to approve the recommended action. Any discussion on this motion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Council Member Aldama, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Hugh, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Milner, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Tomachoff, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Turner, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Mayor Clark, how do you vote? Aye. Chair votes aye. The motion carries. Can I get a motion to approve item 1717? Yes, Mayor. I move approval of item number 17, the agreement with Hertz Corporation. Second. second. Okay, I have a motion from Council Member Tomachoff, a second from Council Member Aldama to approve the recommended action. Any discussion on this motion? Seeing none, roll call vote. Council Member Aldama, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Hugh, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Milner, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Tomachoff, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Turner, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Mayor Clark, how do you vote? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Can I get a motion from item 1 8, please? Mayor. Go ahead, Mr. Turner. I move we approve um, item number 18, the award of Bid 20-16 with Don Sanderson Ford. Second. Okay, I have a motion from Council Member Turner, second from Council Member Tomachoff to approve the recommended action. Any discussion on this particular motion? Yes, Mayor. Ms. Clark. <clears throat> Thank you. As is my habit and practice, I will be voting no on this item. It is a five-year contract, but in addition to that, it is for a service that is um, not specialized, but usual and customary. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, very good. Councilmember Eldam, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Hugh, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Melner, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Tomchop, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Turner, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Mayor. Nay. How do you vote? Nay. Council Chair votes aye. The motion carries. Can I get a motion to approve item 1 9? Uh, Mayor? Go ahead, sir. I move that we approve item uh, number 19, uh, a service agreement with uh, Peroxide LLC. Anybody like to second? That? Second. Okay, I have a motion from Council Member Milner, second from Council Member Hugh to approve the recommended action. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Council Member Eldam, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Hugh, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Milner, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Tom Chop, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Turner, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Mayor, how do you vote? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries unanimous. Could I get a motion on item 2 0? Mayor? Go ahead. I move we award RFP 19 56 to NV5 Inc. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Turner, second Council Member Hugh to approve recommended action items. Any discussion on this motion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Council Member Eldama, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Hugh, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Melner, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Tomchop, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Turner, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Mayor, how do you vote? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Moving on to public hearing land development actions. Item 21, again, uh, we're not... We're not doing anything but land, land annexation on that. So uh, we're going to go to item 21, West 303 Crossing Annexation, AN-208. This is a public hearing tonight. 
mayor, members of the council, here to provide the staff report on the following uh, land use public hearing actions is our interim development services director and planning administrator, Lisa Collins. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Thank you, Mayor and members of the council. So the next three items are, uh, they're public hearing items for what is called a blank petition uh, as part of the annexation process. So you heard these three items, 21, 22, and 23, at a previous workshop where the staff was given direction to move forward. Based on that, the uh, property owners have filed their blank petitions with the, the proper authorities, county authorities, and now this doesn't require an action by you either. This is just, this is a, a time for public comment for those property owners if, if they choose. And then after that, an annexation would actually come to you. After this, they will be getting signatures on those petitions so that we know that those property owners actually wanna be annexed into the city. Uh, I can go through presentations on each one of these, but they're all very similar. Our economic development department has reviewed these, and there's a third party economic development group that looks at these and has found that that's a, a net gain for the city uh, in some cases. It's a percentage of 42% more that we get than we're giving in terms of services and things like that. Um, so with that, I will leave it up to you as to how you wanna proceed. The last item though, number 24, is a little different and that is an annexation. So it would be annexing the property into the city, but I'll reiterate what you uh, have recently said that none of these will result in any uh, development activity. They're being brought in to the city under a similar zoning that exists in the county. That's the state law, that's what has to happen. And most of these are RU43, which is like R143. It's, it's uh, zoning that allows one home per acre. However, most of this land is within the Luke uh, Air Force influence area, which doesn't allow residential development. And so our city's general plan shows this area as industrial, commercial, and things of that nature that's consistent with the kind of traffic and activity around Luke Air Force Base. Now, once um, these properties do decide that they want to actually develop, they would be required to go through the Planning Commission for a recommendation on the zoning and then on to the City Council for a decision. So, as you were saying a couple times at this hearing, that's, that's not where we're at now. By bringing this land in, it just gives the city the authority rather than the county, the authority to regulate the type and kind of development and the benefits, of course, that it would bring to the city. So with that, I'm happy to, to proceed in whatever way you want me to. Uh, yes. Thank you, Mayor. For clarification, Ms. Collins. After we go through the public hearing, after the land is or is not annexed, let's say is annexed, there still is quite a process to go through. The developer has to secure tenants or lessees or buyers for a portion of their property. Then at that point, they have to submit de development plans, design plans for the project that will be on that land. So it will go through staff review for development or design it has to go through the planning commission, correct? Correct. And then eventually the very last step is city council. So there are opportunities for citizens to comment along the way. Is that correct? That, yes, Mayor, Vice Mayor Clark, that's <laughs> correct. And beyond that, I, I couldn't answer any of those questions tonight because we don't have any of that information. Exactly. We're just not at that point. Exactly, We're, thank you. And, thank you. And, and just, uh, I'm not gonna try to nail you down exactly, but we're at the very best, we're, we're a year away from being able to do anything basically other than do a formal annexation tonight. Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, 
the, the formal annexation for the, the three cases, 21, 22, and 23, um, it, it kind of depends on them and how long it takes them to get their blank petitions signed. But even beyond that, that the next step would be annexation. And then after that, it would be zoning and development. So yes, it, it takes time to get all of that information together. And, and so that, that goes for item 21, 22, and 23 with the exception of 24. That's just a, a tiny bit different in that that is the annexation. But once again, there's no zoning associated with it. That would go to the Planning Commission and the City Council. Right. My, my point being, no, until somebody makes that decision and all those things happen, we're, we're a year away minimum before we actually would come back to us. And, and it, it could be, Mr. Yeah. Mayor, but I'm, I'm happy to be in communication with everyone that's here. I think several people have my cards, so okay. I can let them know. All right, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Ms. Collins, on a couple of these, it says the, um, the zoning, the process will occur simultaneously with the annexation. So are there open zoning cases now on, I'm looking at um, AN 208, and then there's, which one is, and then I think AN, what, a couple of them say that all, the process will be simultaneous. So could you please explain that? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Councilwoman Tomachoff. On um, item number 21, uh, yes, that has, that has been to the Planning Commission uh, pending annexation. So when that one comes through for annexation, they do have documents prepared. So we would know the type of building, the type of industrial or commercial building or square footage. And, and actually that was talked about at the, at the workshop. So they're, they're large industrial buildings for users like a White Claw or Red Bull or things like that. And, and I would just say most of these are that. It's that, that's what's perceived in this area, and that's sort of what the economic analysis is, has been done for. So a couple of these, yes, they, they could be coming in soon for the annexation and the rezoning. Um, Copper Wing Logistics is scheduled to be just annexed and then de-annexed, as we discussed in the workshop, so that they do their development in El Mirage. It's a tiny six acre piece that's included with the rest of the development. Okay, all right, any other questions? So Mayor, if I could just clarify, so there are open zoning cases for AN 208 and AN 212? AN 208, yes, AN 212. When that property comes through, that's one that actually will not have a rezoning case associated with it because they already have the zoning in the county. So it's just gonna transfer over as a PAD. So there really won't, when it, when it annexes in, anytime anything annexes in, it has zoning. Fair. But, and they will have the zoning under which they want to develop. <clears throat> okay, can I, are, so, and that, this is the one that confused me anyway because it's, um, it's R, RU43, which would be our R143, and IND2, which would be our M2, mm -hmm. like for like, and it's gonna be zoned to a PAD, so where will the process happen where people in the area will know what is being allowed, what, are the, what entitlements are gonna be in that PAD? I'm sorry, Councilman Tom Top, which case are you talking about? I'm on uh, AN212. 212. 212. Mm -hmm. um, 212 actually. Mayor and Council, I gotta interrupt. We're bouncing Sorry. on three different items, and it's becoming very difficult to follow, and in terms of substantively what's happening, and I can only imagine the clerks having a difficult time trying to actually articulate which comments are going to which item. So if we could back up and actually just address one item at a time, that would be great. Yeah, let's Thank stick you. to item 21. Okay, I thought she wasn't gonna do any presentations, so that's why. <laughs> Well, I, I, <laughs> we can talk about 21 if you have questions on that. No. Mayor. Go ahead. All right, let's take item 21. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> right now, it's just a public hearing. No action yet, right? Other than hearing the public hearing tonight. Correct. There's no action required by the council. That's right. The next action will be annexation. Does it have rezoning coupled with it? 
Yes. All right. And is that a PAD rezoning or yes. what kind of? Okay. Have they submitted conceptuals or any, given us any indication of what they expect to do with that pad? Yes, they have. They've been to the Planning Commission. All right, would you share that with all of us? Certainly. And it was, it's similar to what was um, presented at your workshop. It's 76 acres and it's buildings of approximately 1,250,000 square feet that are industrial and commercial buildings. That's the proposal. Okay. So, would it be fair to say on this annexation, we're not looking at a Love's truck stop? Yes or no? There is not a Love's truck stop proposed for this location. Thank you. All right, that takes care of that one and the immediate question. Now let's move on to 212. Mayor, no, no, point no, order. no let's get item 21 item done. And move on. Oh, oh, and yeah. As a reminder, okay. you're speaking about annexation. You're not speaking about end uses or end users. Right. And it would be inappropriate then to be identifying and questioning an end user's uh, ability or opportunity to locate there due to the fact that we haven't noticed that that's before you, so they're not here to defend themselves. So what's before you is there's been a request to annex, and yes no. basically the question is, is do we as a regulatory body, would we want to regulate them instead of the county regulating them. That's ultimately the question that's Mayor, before you question with regards to an annexation in this yep. regard. Clarification, Mr. City Attorney. They are asking for not just annexation, but they are also asking for pad zoning. So is it not appropriate at this time to find out conceptually since it has it been submitted to the Planning Commission, Ms. Collins? Mr. Phelps. I, I think you're, we need to step back for a second. Okay. What developers and property owners have the right to do is do concurrent processes. So if you're trying to get a development built quicker than normal, you don't want to necessarily wait to go through the entire annexation process. Mm -hmm. You can also begin the annexation process uh, for, the, for the entitlements. So we have a spelled out process. Uh, what we're considering today is should, and it's a requirement to have the public hearing, allow the public to weigh in and provide input to the council as to whether or not the city of Glendale should consider accepting a blank annexation to annex this area into our city limits. Sure. And then what will happen if the, if the council, uh, the next step will be they'll provide their signals, uh, their signatures, and then we will vote on annexation. During that same period of time, they have the right to be to be working with the planning, uh, uh, with the planning department and with our planning commission to align what they want to have for entitlements along the same process. But it will still come back. The public will still have an understanding, like we do for every PAD. We will do a we will we will do a workshop on the PAD. We will then bring it back for, uh, with if we have concurrence to move forward. We'll bring it back into a public meeting, and and the public will get a chance to weigh in as well. So they're just working concurrently because they're trying to get these developments done sooner. They don't want to be holding property for a year before they are able to start you know turning dirt. Well, thank you. That's what I'm trying to get at and make sure that people understand that that there are two processes occurring simultaneously. And, and with three annexations up at once, it is getting confusing. So I wanted to make clear, and we've made clear on 208, we've now made clear on 212, and, and 209, annexation 209 is not germane because it will be followed with a de, by a de-annexation shortly. So at least the public has a better idea of what is occurring with the two annexations up for tonight. Councilmember Domchoff. Thank you, Mayor. And that's what I was trying to clarify for the for the sake of transparency is the staff report speaks to that there these processes are going to happen simultaneously. In order for them to happen simultaneously, there there has there should there's got to be an open zoning case. So that was what I was trying to make sure that people are aware of. And then if they want to follow the zoning case or get an information zoning case, it might even be a good idea to put the zoning case number in here so people know what zoning case it is if it's already been filed so that they can follow it and understand what's happening. That's all because it's even confusing to me. And we do this all the time. So. 
I just want to make sure that we're trying to be as transparent for the residents that took time out of their day to come here and, and try to understand what's happening. Thank you. Okay, with that said, public hearing is now open on approval of annexation of AN-208. Uh, again, I have speaker cards here on this, but again, for what most of you expressed a concern, we're not doing that tonight. We're only doing the annexation. So if there's anybody compelled that you really need to speak on this, you're welcome to come up, but again, we're only annexing, period, okay? Yes. And Mr. Mayor, if I could just make a comment. So this is this is the hearing on the blank petition, and it isn't even the annexation. I, so, and and I know I, it's I just, spoke it's, out of turn here. Yeah. It's a lot of details. So there's the the council really has three meetings. You have a workshop because you chose to to provide more information to the public. The state requires this meeting tonight on the blank petitions, and then they require an actual annexation public hearing where it's an ordinance where you actually do annex the land into the city. These three that we're talking about right now are not that. Some of them, yes, do have a zoning case associated. Those have not been approved. So it's those are all in the proposal stages. All right, very good. So uh, we have had a, a pretty extensive explanation of, of this. Uh, so can I get a motion? Well, actually, uh, what did I say? Public hearing's open. The public hearing. We are open. Okay. So was, again, does anybody want to speak on this? What I need you to do is uh, state your name, the city you live in. If it's Glendale, the crossroads, I don't need to know your address. If it's not Glendale, just the city you're from. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Robert Weedman. Uh, I live in Waddell. My, my property is across the street from where this is gonna happen. I'm on the other side of Cotton Lane. Uh, as you stated, uh, what I thought we were gonna discuss is not happening tonight, but I do have a couple of questions that I would like clarified, please. Uh, the terms you've been throwing around, we don't quite understand. The PAD something, what is that, please? Uh, it was with the, with the, with the, uh, yeah. What, what might be easier, sir, on your questions is be, uh, we're, we don't go back and forth in this setting. Okay. But uh, you can certainly talk with her and she can answer, I'm sure, 99.9% .9 of all of your questions. Okay. Uh, uh, if, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. And I have one more. Mayor, I, can we take a recess for five minutes? I, I suppose so. I would appreciate it if you would indulge me to take a recess for okay. five minutes. Okay, all right, so we're gonna recess uh, by the advice of our attorney. So we're recessed. May I ask?
I'm calling this meeting back into session, please. I'll be with you in just a minute, okay. and I will give you my card. Thank you. Would you take your seats, please? I want your four. He was voted off the island. <laughs> uh, the mayor, the mayor had uh, uh, an event that he had to attend, so you're stuck with me for the rest of the meeting. Good luck, everyone. All right. Um, we have no vote on item 21. Um, I'll wait a minute. I don't think they've got the right sign. Vice Mayor? Yes. Um, just, it, it's, it's kind of a get caught up where we're at. The public hearing at the time we recessed was open, so the public hearing would still we be open. So if you'd want to take any public hearing on this item, now is the time to do it. And then I would ask that if not, then you would close the public hearing okay. and move on to number 22. Thank you so much, Mr. Bailey. You're welcome. Did you all hear what he said? Okay. Um, is there any further comment on Item 21, annexation number 208. Seeing none, I'm going to close this pub. Oh, I didn't see the hands, I'm sorry. You, let, let me say this. Cards? Yes, I do. Or did you all fill out speaker cards? All right, let me say this. I believe that the item that you are going to wish to speak to is item 24. Uh, no. no, 21, all right. Would you please come up, state your name for the record, and where you live. Good evening, Vice Mayor and Council. Thank you for taking the time to um, listening to my concerns. My name is Maria McAllister. Um, I own property on Saryville and Glendale and on 80, 185th Avenue and Bethany. Um, my family lives directly behind where the proposed property is to change the zoning from RU. I have it right here. Uh, 45. May, may I just say R -R that item 21 is simply a public hearing on a proposed annexation, annexation. petition. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And when we get to item 24, we will be talking about an annexation that could possibly include the use in question. You are aware of that, right? So regarding the annexation is why I was going to have okay. that discussion. Um, the annexation um, has unintended consequences of the residents of where we're living at, and that's what I wanted to bring up, is the annexation itself, um, when Glendale comes into an unincorporated county, there are concerns from the community. The concerns are jurisdiction issues. So a lot of the times when someone gets pulled over out there, it's usually MCSO that comes out and responds. Um, so now we're kind of like, wow, Glendale wants to come in. Where's the, there's going to be a confusion. So we are concerned as residents in the area. Same thing with the fire department. We usually rely on rural uh, metro to come out. And so so a lot of the times that we are concerned because when we pay so much once a year to make sure that our, our properties are taken care of by rural metro, um, will Glendale also consider that as part of the annexation? And, and I heard Ms. Um, Ms. Collins, and I appreciate her um, giving this information. A lot of this information that came to us in the mail was that this was a final hearing for the annexation, which brings up a lot of concerns for my family. I speak for more than one person. I speak for my mother. Eva de la Cruz Hernandez, Mario de la Cruz, my brother Martin Hernandez, um, and which are in, the, they live in the area. Um, so it also, when you annex an area, it's just something to consider as how the neighborhood is directly affected when Glendale comes in to a neighborhood where we had a way of living, um, our, which are farms, some of us have horses, our children have bus stops that we are actually um, in there. So I just wanted to kind of bring that to the concern. Um, and um, I, 
when you're annexing, I, we understand why you're annexing. We understand that it's in the best interest of Glendale to make more money and revenue, but how does that affect the community around it? Because it may not affect your um, constituents, but it affects us who live there. So thank you for taking the time for hearing my concerns. Um, thank you, my name's Maria. Thank you, Maria. Uh, is there anyone else who wishes to speak to this item? Come on up, sir. Did you fill out a yellow card? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Please state your name and where you live for the record. Yes, ma'am. My name is Todd Knight. I live at the corner of uh, Citrus and Bethany Home. I'm uh, uh, three, three tours of Lucas, an F-16 instructor pilot. We came out and bought some land out in uh, the West Valley. And most importantly for you, I want to... There's confusion amongst the property owners out on the west side of what's going on with the, the land. And it appears to me that there's some confusion even amongst ourselves here. And so I guess uh, I just wanted to note it to please do your due respect with respect to that land. There's a lot of good two acre horse property that's been there years. And as they approach upon it, it's definitely gonna affect families and folks that are out there. So please do your due diligence. Thank you for your time. Your name was Todd, right? Yes, ma'am. Todd, I don't ha seem to have a card for you. So for the record, would you fill out a yellow card and give it to I'll the fill out city? Yeah. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak to this item? Yes, ma'am. But I did not feel one, but there were none. But I feel like to say something. Uh, you filled out a card? No, there's none over there. They're out. Oh, they're out of card? Yes. I see so. And agendas. There's yellow cards up there. Only one. All right. I'll get to you. Uh, while she's filling out a card, did you fill out a card, young lady? Did you fill out a card? Pardon? I can fill it out right after. All right, go fill out a card as well. Um, they came in after the recording. Okay. There you go. I out. Come on up while those people are filling out cards. Would you tell us your name and where you live for the record? Yes, uh, my name's Tomasa Anzo and I do live on Glendale Avenue. Um, I know that it was, there is a lot of confusion because I'm confused myself, but as a concerned resident, my child, because right now it's not as busy, it will get busy once this business, if it does go up, and I'll tell you from experience, my daughter almost got hit by a semi in that area on Glendale Avenue. And it's no, there's no speed bumps, there's no cops, and it would have been my word against the semi driver. The the, it could be a really big impact because these a lot of these bus stops, there's four different school buses there. There's one for Verado, one for Belen Soto, one for Maple Pageant, and one for the new high school um, Canyon View. And so my concern is for the kids in the area that don't know better and that are not gonna be used to the traffic that will impact the kids. So being that my daughter was eight years old at the time. I dropped, my, my heart dropped because I was right there in front of her. But I'm so used to it being horses, a random car. And that day it was a semi and he was going pretty fast. So it's gonna have a major impact and that's my main concern as well. And it's just scary. So I hope you guys take that and also think about the children. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yes, ma'am, come on up. <coughs> Got it. Hello, my name's Eva Hernandez. I'm not a very good speaker, but I gotta let you know what I feel. I live on 16137 West Glendale Avenue, right next from the dairy, and I assume they're selling to a big company that they're gonna put, put a big warehouse. Now, my understanding is that once they rezone that one, my property is gonna, do, uh, is gonna lose its value. And that is a big concern. I've been there for more than almost 30 years. 1998. 1999, yeah. Uh -huh. So, if you guys are gonna do a lot of, and I heard there's gonna be more warehouses around our neighborhood. That really is a big bother for me, because my land's gonna go like, 
garbage. If it's worth a lot of money right now, it's gonna, what's gonna happen to my dad? What am I gonna do, sell it for 20 bucks? It's, an, it's a matter of speech, not, you know, real petty. I am so angry that I know I like my neighbor. I want him to sell this land for good money, <clears throat> but I don't want to depreciate my land, because that's not fair to, for me. Thank you. I can't, we can't respond. We can listen to your comments, but we're not. Yes. And, and the next thing on the, on the meeting, on the, on the paper, there was a, the big board on Cervell. It says today was the last meeting for it. And you guys are saying it's not. The, so when is going to be our next meeting so somebody could hear us? Uh, I'm sure Ms. Collins can answer your questions. So that's the reason we all came, because they said it was going to be the, uh, okay. the last meeting. All right. Thank you. Anything else? <sighs> No, I just hope you guys can really do something right for our 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 little. Well, I thought it was county land. I really, all this time, I thought it was Lishfield Park. And uh, right now, how I'm hearing, is it Glendale? Does it belong yeah. to Glendale or oh. county land or Lishfield? Uh, no, I'm, I'm confused. Okay, Miss Collins, I believe, can answer some of your questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, young lady, you're next. Please come up. And tell us your name and where you live for the record. My name is Yesenia Espinoza. I live across on Cotton Lane and Bethany Home, directly where they're planning to build the industrial buildings. Um, yes, we spoke to Mrs. Collins, thank you, and she'll address some of our issues. He, she even offered to do a meeting with all of us. There's a lot of uh, residents here present that live in Waddell that this annexation will um, really affect us. I am a uh, broker, a real estate broker, and um, this annexation, uh, there's, we understand growth, growth is inevitable, but just what's gonna go on the other side of our properties, which are half a million dollar properties, they're, they're, they, they're all worth 1.5, and that's on an acre. If you have two acres like some of you, if you have more, then they're worth more. And, and um, when we, the information that was going out to us is that there was a proposed love station going on the corner, northwest or northeast corner, of Bethany Home in Cotton Lane, where our children get picked up, multiple buses get picked up. Um, and um, so it's a concern, not only for our, our property values, it's concern for our children's safety, it's concern for the, our health, our animals' health, because everybody has animals there. So it's a huge concern. And yes, again, this was supposed to be a public hearing, so we're like a public hearing, that means um, thank you for allowing us to, to you know, voice our opinions and our concerns, which a lot of people left, uh, probably, um, I want to say 30% left because they said, oh, well, we're not going to be addressing this, but um, we all need to voice our concerns. And if you guys could just drive over there and see our beautiful properties over there and just putting big warehouses across the street is is really gonna affect us. Um, so I know it's not just money-wise, it's it should be it should be what it's gonna affect, what it's gonna do to us residents. So um, that's just our, you know, a lot of our concerns. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Yes. I just need to make sure, a point of clarification, we're on item 21, is that correct? We're still on item 21. I have explained that this issue is really connected to item 24, but Mayor and Council, point they order. still chose to speak at this point. You have four items, and they are all within a baseball throw of each other. So it's, when we started considering 21 through 24 at the same time, I think we created a lot of confusion. Mm -hmm. And so my understanding based upon even what's being identified is their locales, they are addressing number 21. They are addressing number 21? Yeah. Based on, based on, I, I'm making the assumption, but based on the geographic okay. locations they are identifying as their residences, okay. that is with regards to item number 21. All right. Okay. So perhaps I got confused when the resident said that her children were picked up at the bus stop at Cotton Lane, which is the other side of the 303 from the annexation mm -hmm. that's in 21. Mm -hmm. But if that's... If that's how it works out there, that's, uh, I appreciate it. I you. think this whole thing is a mess, quite frankly, right now. <laughs> uh, you, uh, you know, it's, it's just that, please, we don't do that here. Um, I, it's just that it, it wasn't intentional, but it just seems to have worked that way. Um, is there any more comment on 21, which is totally different from 24? 
item 24. All right, if there's, yeah, well, I got one more. Okay, come on up. Please state your name and where you live for the record. My name is Cynthia Graber. Um, I happened to come today because I was out visiting my parents' property on the 303 in Bethany, and I saw um, all the annexation and so forth, and so I decided to come to the meeting today. I had no notification. We've, had, we've received nothing in the mail in regards to this. I am very concerned because we have property on the 303 in Bethany, 40 acres, of which is certified property, organic, and how this is gonna affect our property. All right. And what is, what is the rules in Glendale as far as notification of property owners? Again, we cannot respond to your comments in this public hearing. Ms. Collins, who is our interim planning director, can answer your questions for okay. you. And okay. again, this is by accident that I'm even here because I've not received any notification at all. all Thank right. you. Same Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak to item 21? <laughs> Talking about west of the 303, and we are north, I mean, we're east of the 303 on, on Glendale Avenue and Sarah. Yeah, they're talking about the yeah. east room project. We just okay. 21. All right. Thank you very much. Is that the same area we're talking about, or there's different? Thank, thank you for that clarification. At this point, I would like to close the public hearing on item 21. The public hearing is now closed on item 21. Um, perhaps in the interest of total confusion, let's, Ms. Collins, with your approval, let's move to item 24, which is the annexation in question. No, this one no, first. no, 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 no. Well, I, it was suggested. Go, just Mr. Bailey. These two should be. I will take direction from you. Mayor and Council, for the sake of trying to create less confusion, yes. if we could just go to 22, and I think, again, if there's a map that we could put up on I the board, gonna, I think I we can identify ask. this is the property that we're now discussing that's so that everybody can understand and we can have some clarity in that discussion. That would be very helpful, thank you. <laughs> is it up? Okay, well, even though it's not up yet, it will come up. Let's move on then to item 22. Barclay Group Annexation AN-212 Public Hearing. Um, and, I, and Vice Mayor, I, I apologize. Um, there, are, there are PowerPoint presentations. I'm not sure why they're not coming up. However, this property is on the west side of the Loop 202 between Glendale Avenue and, um, and just south of Maryland Avenue at... Uh, 303. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yes, it's west of the 303 and south of Glendale Avenue. And so that that's the one that we're looking at now, and I apologize that I can't put it up there for you uh, to look at. But this one is called the Barclay Group Annexation. It's AN212, and this is 97 acres. This land has already gone through some rezonings in the county. However, once again, for this evening, this is a hearing on the blank petitions. So it is an opportunity for public input. It is not the annexation. The annexation hearing will be following this. It will be advertised. Ms. Collins, for the sake of clarification, this has nothing to do with any uh, development that the public may be concerned about. Not that I've heard of this evening, no. Thank you. All right, um, at this point. Can we get the question? Open the public. Pardon? We, this public hearing you need to open. I was about to open the public hearing. Thank you. At this point, I am open, opening the public hearing on annexation 212, the Barclay Group. Are there, is there anyone in the public that wishes to comment on this item? Annexation 212, the Barclay Group. Speak now, okay. Seeing none, I am closing the public hearing on annexation 212. 
We will now move to item 23. Copper, Ms. Wing, <laughs> Copper Wing Logistics Annexation AN-209 public hearings. This was just here. This, that was submitted to the council, so yeah. I don't know what to say. We'll do it. Ms. Collins, do you have a presentation on item 23, annexation 209, Copper Wing Log Logistics? Yes, yes, thank you, Vice Mayor. Yes, that is a property that is um, adjacent to Northern Parkway. It's a, an approximately 6.3 acre property called Copper Wing and that property is, is currently in the county. The request is to annex that into the city of Glendale, and then after it is annexed into the city of Glendale, the request is that it would be de-annexed and annexed into the city of El Mirage for a larger John F. Long development. Okay, now we're finally getting a bit organized. Council, are there any questions of Ms. Collins? Seeing none, I will open the public hearing on annexation 209, Copper Wing Logistics. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak to this item? Yeah. How, I'm not really sure why. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing on annexation 209, Copper Wing Logistics. Madam Vice Chair? Yes. You were, I was distracted and I did have a question for staff on this one, if I could. Yes, you may. Um, in the staff report, uh, it, uh, one, two, three, like four paragraphs down, it says, as the property is proposed to be developed within the city of El Mirage, there's no guarantee that the future development will comply with all state statutes and city zoning ordinance provisions for development in the vicinity of a mil military airport. So, I mean, if it's required by state statute, wouldn't El Mirage need to comply with it? Uh, th thank you, Vice Mayor, Councilman Turner. Um, I, I think all we're saying is that we don't have the ability to, to regulate that since it won't be developed in our city, that it won't be our regulations. I'm assuming that El Mirage follows the same state statute that we do. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, any other further comments from council on that? All right, we will move on to land development actions to item 24, approval of ordinance number 020-01, annexation area number 199. Ms. Uh, Bauer, would you? Ordinance number 020-01, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, extending and increasing the corporate limits of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, State of Arizona, pursuant to the provisions of Title IX, Chapter 4, Section 9-471, Arizona Revised Statutes and its amendments by annexing certain territory consisting of approximately 161 acres at the southeast corner of Cotton Lane and Glendale Avenue to be known as Annexation Area Number 199, amending the zoning map, providing for an effective date, and directing the city clerk to record a certified copy of the ordinance. Okay, thank you, Vice Mayor and uh, members of the council. So this is a request for 161 acres to be annexed into the city of Glendale. This is um, something that you um, initially heard about last year at one of your work studies. There was the blank petition filed. There was a public hearing like we had um, this evening for the other cases. And so this is ready to move forward with annexation. In this case, the property is zoned RU43 and, um, and it would come in as A1 agricultural because that's the closest designation that we have. There is no zoning case associated with this. Any rezoning of this property would be required prior to development. That would go to the Planning Commission for a recommendation and then on to you for um, your decision on the case. That is not scheduled as of yet. All right. Council members, any questions regarding this item? Uh, please, if I may. Yes. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So just to clarify, it is currently in Maricopa County, it's zoned uh, rural residential. And if this council brings it into, if it, we annex it into the city tonight, then we would assign it um, A1 agricultural zoning because that's the closest we have to its current zoning 
in the county? That's correct. Okay. So, it, and is there a zoning application or a rezoning application in process for this piece of land currently in the city? There is discussion. There's nothing scheduled for hearings. There's nothing in process. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Vice Mayor. Yes. I just wanted to clarify that so there's not one schedule, but there's an application that's being, it's under review. So just for transparency, that there's one in hand, it's being reviewed, that's not been scheduled yet, just so that those that are in the audience know that. So just wanted to clarify, thank you. Thank you. Th th that's that's right, just just to, to clarify, I don't wanna confuse things, but when, when land is um, requested to annex into the city, that's that's part of the economic analysis as to what what is going to be developed there and whether it's the best interest of the city. Like some of the neighbors said, there are uh, city services associated with this, and so there's a cost to the city. So the the expectation is that more more will be brought into the city than the city will have to spend to support the use. So yes, there's always discussion about that. And at the workshops, there's always discussion about the anticipated uses that once the land comes in, yes, there'll be a rezoning process to for the ultimate development, whatever it is. But May there's no guarantee that that would happen. It's a public process. May I follow up with some questions? Please. What is the current zoning on that land? The current zoning is RU43. And the applicant is requesting what zoning? The, it would be some type of a PAD zone. So the applicant has not requested zoning as of this date? There's not a formal request, no. There's been an informal request? There's there's always discussion. Okay. Like like I said at the at the workshop there was discussion about what the city could anticipate so that the council could determine whether they wanted to entertain exactly the annexation. So that happened last year, and so now we're just moving down the road to the second the first hearing that's required mm -hmm. by the statute, the second hearing that's required by this by you because you wanted a work shop prior to that, mm -hmm. and then there'll be a third hearing um, to actually make a decision on whether you do want to annex the land. Okay, at workshop, yes. Do, they, do you recollect what the discussion was with regard to possible uses on that land? Um, there, there was discussion about, and I can tell you, and it is consistent with our general plan, which shows industrial and commercial. Correct. So industrial and commercial, and I believe along Glendale Avenue and Bethany Home, there was some discussion of commercial and retail. Okay. All right, and that's all we know at this point, correct? That's, that's correct. Okay. Vice Mayor? Yes. If I could, uh, again, reading from the staff report, um, so it says a rezoning application for PA for planned area development is under review at the city. Rezoning, if approved, would need to be consistent with the loop compatible land use plan mm -hmm. and the city's general plan. The PAD that's on that is under review proposes a mix of industrial and commercial uses. The rezoning request would be brought forward to the council once the annexation is complete. Correct. So the PAD calls for a mix of industrial and commercial. Okay which is what we had discussed, yes. Okay, this, yes, uh, Council Member Tomasch. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I'd like to ask a question. What is our notification process for areas such as this where 300 feet is essentially no notification? How do we handle situations like this so that people, I mean, is it, can they subscribe somewhere for notification or is there some way that, I mean, that we do things differently when you're talking about areas where people are, you know, half a mile, quarter mile apart from each other and there's, there's no real notification area that would work? Uh, Vice Mayor, Councilman Tomlinchoff, 
We have the same notification. It's 300 foot notification. We post the sites and they're also in the newspaper. So we have those three ways. Uh, people can also subscribe as an interested party if they want to know. Okay, that's what I was trying to get out there is if you're interested in the zoning case, you can subscribe as an interested party and you will receive all of the notifications. So um, if you're, because 300 feet is, you know, that's not gonna get anybody notified. So the people out here who wanna stay informed about this zoning case, make sure you, you subscribe as an interested party and you'll get all of the cards in the mail and you'll get all the notifications. Thank you. Okay. Any further comments by any council members? Okay, hearing none, uh, do I have a motion on this item? Yes, Vice Mayor. I move we approve and adopt ordinance number uh, 20 01. Is there a second? Second. All right. Um, Mr. Attorney, do I do roll call on this? Mayor and Vice yes. Mayor and Council, the public can comment it on, on, on this one as well. And then All call right. for the vote. And if you choose to do a, a roll call vote, you may do so. All right. I didn't see any cards on that, but I will. Um, no cards. Invite the public, if there is anyone who wishes to come up and speak to this item, please come forward. This one. Yes, sir. Oh, it's not a public. You'd filled out a card previously, correct? Please, again, state your name for the record and where you live. Thank you again. I did not thank you, Council, earlier. I'm sorry. Uh, my time was interrupted and I didn't get a chance to thank you, but thank you for your time. My name is Robert Weedman. I live in Waddell, uh, the other side of Cotton Lane from this proposed uh, change. My only concern is, as uh, Councilmember Tomachoff just brought up, being informed, how do we know to, to want to be informed if we know this is, if we do not know this is going on is my concern. Uh, I'm the president of our, our small HOA. We have no idea this was going on. I hear that this has been going on for a year in workshop or whatever the term was. We had no idea this is going on across the street from us. And that's just, I just want you folks to know that she, Council Member Tomanchoff did say to, to subscribe to this, but if we don't know this is going on, we don't, we have no idea how to, how to find out that this is even going on. And, and I just want you to know that, that uh, I'm not asking for an answer. I'm just telling you, we have no idea that this is going on without some sort of notification. All right, thank, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. All right, I have a, a motion by Council Member Yu and a second by, I forgot who second did anyone second it, and a second by Council Member Tomashoff. Uh, I will now conduct. Could I speak to you? Sure, come on up. What the heck? Did you fill out a card? All right. Please state your name and where you live for the record. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Bloomberg. I live on Glendale in Perryville, which is just a major access way from the 303 right there. Um, we looked for like three years um, to find property in that area because we wanted uh, more country living for our children. I have three kids, one here. Um, and. Uh, I grew up in Eastern Oregon, up in, in the city country up there, sorry. Um, and to have purchased the property out there in Waddell and to learn about these huge developments that are going in and personally have seen um, we've lived out there for um, about four years now, so we searched for three years. So seven years we've been looking in that area, living in there. Um, Personally, uh, seeing the traffic that is coming in with all these developments, uh, the kids who just want to ride their bikes on, there's no sidewalks. Uh, the street lights, the kids get to enjoy the stars at night, um, which you can't see closer in, in the cities. Um, 
the horses out there, it's amazing. We've got the Wildlife World Zoo close by. So all the um, the families that come out seeking seeking this country life, country community, with these big money uh, uh, businesses, c corporations coming in, it's just uh, devastating to our community. I've seen um, people get bucked off horses on the side of the roads because of the semi-traffic that's already increased after the 303 loop was finished. Um, uh, the school buses, again, the students on the side of the road waiting in the morning, the um, organic farms that are right in our area, uh, what, what happens, like brake dust and all the pollution from the semis landing on the organic foods, you know, that's, people come out here, us smaller um, citizens who want a better life and the bigger corporations that come in, it is um, not fair of them to not, you know, drive around in the area. You guys, the White Tanks Library, have you been out there? You know, it's beautiful land and um, I just, really hope you guys could look past that, like for your grandkids and your great grandchildren, you know, what you um, would hope for them in be able to um, experience some country life without having to drive way far away. You know, we still, we still appreciate the businesses and the, the, um, the businesses and the gas stations, all that, that, that uh, we are able to drive, you know, 10 miles to, that's fine. But most of the, the property, the horse property out there is um, so valuable and it's just slowly getting squished and encroached upon. And um, my kids enjoyed uh, Tomachoff Farms when they were little, little. My oldest is 18 now. So it's been an amazing um, area out there. And I really, really, from the bottom of my heart and my kids, that you guys just think twice about approving these huge land um, um, developments and these big corporations that just are thinking about dollar signs that are just going to squish us. Please. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. One more. Come on down. Yes, Jennifer. The post. Please state your name and your address for the record. Right. Um, Marcia Ford, and I live I in Waddell, around 175th Avenue, north of Bethany, and about a half mile west of where you're planning on doing this. I, I wrote emails earlier today. Um, I didn't plan on speaking. Um, we've lived there for 32 years, and my husband is a horseshoe or a farrier. I don't know if anybody knows what that is, a horseshoe or blacksmith. He's been able to make a living out there because there's so many horses out there. We, we, a lot of us have moved out there because we lived in the cities before and we had horse property and we were surrounded by regular neighborhoods. So we moved out west as far as we could go. We're up against the White Tank Mountain Park. We can't go any farther west. What are we gonna do? Don't you wanna preserve the land? Tomlchoff, your, your whole family are farmers. You know what it's like. We've, we've lived out there. It, it's an incredible lifestyle. And then you want to put this up, you, you have the possibility of putting a truck stop, one of the absolute worst businesses you could possibly put near a horse property. As I told you in the email, I mean, I saw a kid walking a pig down the road the other day. I mean, our kids raised, we're in 4-H, they raised, they raised pygmy goats and chickens for 4-H. We even had emus at one time. I mean, it's a, it's a Western lifestyle. Have any of you been out there to see our properties out there? It's beautiful out there. And, and a development like this, I mean, we agree, we, uh, we, we're not stupid, we know they have to develop it, but to put some, one of the dirtiest businesses to even consider that, a truck stop, I mean, we, we have a, a next door app and, and some of the people out there are truckers. They've been truckers for 30 years and they said, we don't want to live near a truck stop. We know we know what kind of things that brings. I mean, the the, the light pollution, the hundred the hundred trucks they're going to park overnight, and and uh, it, it, it's human trafficking, prostitution, drugs, to mention a few. We're out in the country. Do you guys have any clue? I mean, you live you live here, and it's really nice to say, oh, we're going to put all the crap out in the West Valley. Well, we live in the West Valley, and it's not crappy. It's beautiful out there. Please think of that when you're doing your planning and zoning. I mean, it sounds really good. Let's just put it out there. And like I say, noise pollution. <sighs> yeah, wait, some of us might even be in the noise corridor, but, but Luke Air Force Base, most of the planes take off in the morning. 
They go to the southwestern part of our state, they come back late afternoon. That's the noise, and we're all used to it. And it's, it's nothing compared to when I lived in the city and I was kind of, I wasn't even near the Phoenix airport, but, but boy, you can hear the planes 24 hours a day when you live in the city. You probably can hear it from here. And out there, we're used to that, but we're not gonna complain about that, but, but consider what you're can, even thinking of putting out there. It's gonna affect our lifestyle, let alone the property values. If you're into money, I mean, you're, you're so concerned with putting out businesses to make money for your city, but you're not thinking about the people that live there. Please do. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Okay, uh, we have a motion and a second. At this time, I'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Council Member Aldama, how do you vote? Nay. Uh, Council, uh, I'm gonna take these out of order. I'm reading off the sheet, folks. Council Member Balnar, how do you vote? Yes. Um, you know, I, I have heard what has been said here tonight, and uh, and I, I understand what, what, what the sentiment is. Um, what this pr action is doing tonight is going to give, in my opinion, better control than you will have in the county. The county, as you may know, has much more loose ordinance, and, and or I should say zoning regulations, uh, from what I have seen, um, this could have easily have just been done through the county. And the county uh, has uh, less restriction, I believe, in the way they do their zoning. Um, and I believe this action t tonight is going to actually provide better protection uh, for the area. It will allow the community to voice their opinion and allow the, the planning and zoning uh, uh, function to review those and then allow the council to also review those. So given that I believe this process that we're going through right now is going to be uh, a better opportunity for all, I vote aye. Thank you. Council Member Yu, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Turner, how do you vote? Explain my vote, please. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, I want to express my appreciation to the residents in the area that have come down and talked to us tonight. I apologize for um, the confusion we may have had and we uh, added to the room, but I think we finally did get to where we all were on the same page and we can appreciate the comments that you've shared with us. Um, I do believe that this area is going to develop. It's going to develop probably in the way that the rest of that area out there is trending and I do think I would agree that you can have more protection if it develops within the city of Glendale than within that if it develops in the county. Though I do think that for those of you who live west of Cotton Lane, that there are opportunities for you to work with the County Board of Supervisors on restricting um, heavy truck traffic um, on your streets uh, that are to the west of 303. And I would, if this is approved tonight, and if it does proceed through the zoning process and whatever ends up going out there, I would encourage you to work hard with our development services department so that the city of Glendale is doing everything with the traffic control, driveways and that sort of thing to um, keep as much of any truck traffic headed back to the, to the east to get on the 303 rather than proceeding west um, as a shortcut to the 10 or something like that. Um, this isn't, this is not the end of it tonight. There's several more hearings and steps in the process. Um, and with that, I vote aye. Council Member Tomachoff. Thank you, Vice Mayor. If I may explain, explain my vote. Yes. Um, tonight, basically the only zoning that's happening is this is going from residential acre lots, essentially, to agricultural. There will be a zoning case. There'll be plenty of opportunity for your input. And I and thank and this has been a long meeting. And I know it's a long drive. And I you all work and have kids. And so thank you for coming out tonight. Um, and if you want to find out how to get, um, you can contact any of us, and we can help you or contact our planning and zoning department on to subscribe to be informed uh, as the next steps take place through the zoning case. Um, so all this is really doing, as Councilmember Melner said, is basically giving you, uh, there's a, it's a little bit more 
protection for residents, I believe, and the zoning case will come later. This is simply an annexation into the city of Glendale. So with that, I vote aye. Okay, and as chair, I'd like to explain my vote. Um, development is coming, folks, whether you like it or not. And I, I agree with Councilmember Malnar. You stand a better chance of more sensitivity by being in the city of Glendale than you do in the county. County doesn't give a darn about what develops around you. At least we'll listen, we'll try to accommodate as much as we are able to. So I think you will get a better deal working with the city than you would with the county. I would also say this, I sympathize a great deal with, with your sentiments. I live one mile east of the stadium on a one acre irrigated property with horse privileges. Our street has no curb gutter, sidewalk, street lights. It's a beautiful, dark enclave at night. I love my street and I'm right smack dab in the middle of Glendale, a mile away from Westgate. And I still believe that I have a quality of life similar to what you all have, but I'm in the middle of the city. I don't have two acres, I only have an acre, but um, I love my property and I love living in Glendale, and I love living where I live, close to where some of the action is too. They are compatible, they can, if you're sensitive enough, it can work out. I know that's not what you wanna hear, but all I can tell you is that the development is coming, with or without Glendale there, it's coming. Better you work with the entities that have control over that property and that can do as much as is possible to protect your way of life as we can. And with that, I vote aye. Vice Mayor. Yes. If I may, I, I just clarified something and if I may, um, I'd like to make some comments if you'll allow me to. Please do. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, I sat on the Planning and Zoning Commission before, in a, before being a uh, council member, before elected as being a council member, um, and I have never been so confused on the zoning issue as I was tonight. I, I just uh, texted the city manager and the city attorney and clarified a question of mine uh, that, that um, it, reason for me voting uh, no, and the clarification was if we don't annex into Glendale, then the county will decide what develops in this area without our input. And I'm not willing to give up that input to the county. Um, I then can't advocate for you, the residents, what goes there. Um, but with that said, we haven't, you haven't struck the, the, uh, the gavel yet in the day, so I, I would request to change my vote, if I may, and uh, with that clarification, I'm gonna vote aye. And, and again, I have never been so confused on the zoning issue. This is the very first time, um, and so I wanna apologize to those who uh, felt like I was in support of, of them, and I am in support of you, but I'm not willing to give up my legislative input to, to the county uh, on, on uh, because I voted no, so. If I may, thank you. Yes, and with that, the motion carries unanimously. Vice Mayor. Yes, Mr. Phelps. For the benefit of the, there was a question from the dais and for the benefit of those in the audience. Uh, one, in terms of uh, statutory requirements on annexation notification, the statutes require that the affected property owners are notified. So in other words, if you wanna have property annexed in, Somebody who's not being annexed in or already is shouldn't have a say on whether you want to be regulated and annexed in. So the notification for a blank annexation hearing is we have to require that any property that's being considered for annexed, that the affected property owners be brought in. The reason why that statute's there, if you recall, if you have 51% of an area, uh, then you could actually annex a bigger area, even though 49% of the property owners say no. So you wanna make sure every property owner is notified. With regards to the PAD, our process has been as follows. They will, they will work with the planning staff to come up with a proposed 
L, uh, framework for a PAD. We will then hold a public workshop, which is what we do. At the public workshop, uh, there can be consensus provided to move it forward to the next stage. One of those things we can do is, is extend the notification area. State statute requires that when you're changing land use, that affected property owners are notified. Now, our current statute says uh, it's 300 feet radius. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with the scale of this project and, and what's there, we, the council may direct it to have a much larger notification. We'll discuss that at the workshop. Then what will happen as it comes to the Planning Commission, they have the public hearing, we will mail cards out and, and post in the paper to that area that the council has determined should be notified. They'll get an opportunity to weigh in at the, at the planning commission at their public hearing. Once they forward their recommendation to the council, we will conduct another public hearing and the public will get a chance to weigh in there as well. So, so I think that the difference being, I think Councilman Tomachoff asked about what's our requirement for notification. In annexations, you only have to require to notify the affected property owners. We're not, anybody living in Waddell is not being impacted by another property choosing to stay in the county or to stay in the, or to come part of the city of Glendale. Land use, however, does affect across jurisdictional lines. So we're required to notify notify all affected parties, regardless if they're in county, in another municipality, or within the city. So we'll we'll make sure if this comes forward with a rezone application, we will make sure that we clearly discuss this in the workshop and make sure we get direction and consensus from the council on how large of a notification area that you would like to have. Thank you. That's very good. And I I'm going to offer something as well. Um, my email address is jclark at glendaleaz.com. Um, if you will send me an email, my, my council assistant will build a list, an email list, and we will make sure that we send out a blast email to anyone who is interested in knowing when we have the workshop, the public workshop. Now, be advised that citizens cannot comment at a public workshop. It's informational to the public only. But we can at least notify you so that you can come and attend and hear what is being presented to council and what council's directions are uh, as a result of that information. We will also notify you when it goes before the Planning Commission and we will notify you when it goes before the City Council. So if you are interested, you can see me after the meeting. I will give you my email address again and put you on a, a notification list as well. We're, we're operating and we want you to know. And we di really didn't realize that you didn't know. But now you do. And we're willing to okay. share whatever information we have. Vice Mayor. Yes. If, I'm, if I... If I may clarify, I was asking about zoning notification. That's why I said 300 feet, because I know what our process is. But obviously, and as you said, 300 feet doesn't really work in this type of area. So thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Vice Mayor. Yes. Um, I think that's a terrific uh, and generous offer that you made to compile an email list. I would also like to remind anyone who is interested, um, as the Vice Mayor said, at the, at the workshop, we don't take public comment, but you are welcome to come and, and observe. But we also record the workshops, and they are, they're broadcast live on our Channel 11, which you may not receive, but we also have them posted on our website. Um, so you could go after the fact, well, you actually, if the technology is working, you can watch it live, uh, live stream over the internet, or you can go back later and watch a recorded version of it too, so you would not necessarily have to take time off work just to witness something that you couldn't have direct input into. So thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Any other comments before we finally move on? Okay. Um, if. You are not interested in staying because we finished all annexation items and you do decide to leave, I, I request that you do so as quietly as possible because we are still conducting business. I will now move on, move on to item 25. Ms. Bauer, would you introduce it? 
Ordinance number 020-02, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, amending chapter two, article eight, division five of the Glendale City Code, changing the composition of the Human Relations Commission. Uh, Vice Mayor and Council, the proposed ordinance would reduce the number of members on the Human Relations Commission from 14 to seven. Thank you, Ms. Bauer. Council members, are there any questions? Council member Turner. I don't have a question, but I'll have a motion when you're ready. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, I mistook that for a question. Uh, any other? No? Uh, do I have a motion? Yes, Vice Mayor. I move we pass and adopt ordinance number 020-02 and waive reading beyond the title. Thank you, second. and we have a second from Council Member Yu. We have motion from Council Member Turner, second from Council Member Yu. Um, I will now conduct, I believe I conduct a roll call vote. Yes, I do. Uh, Council Member Aldama, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Yu, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Malnar, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Council Member Tomachoff, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Turner, how do you vote? Aye. And the Vice Mayor votes aye. Motion passes unanimously. We will now move on to item 26. Ms. Bauer, would you introduce it? Ordinance number 020-03, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, authorizing the execution of a power distribution easement in favor of Salt River Project Agricultural Improvement and Power District for power distribution facility to serve residential Camelback Ranch subdivision at the northwest corner of 107th Avenue and Camelback Road and directing the city clerk to record a certified copy of the ordinance. Vice Mayor, members of the council here to provide staff report is principal engineer for the city of Glendale, Jamie Chapin. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Good evening, Vice Mayor and Council Members. This is a request for City Council to waive reading beyond the title and adopt an ordinance granting a non-exclusive power distribution easement in favor of Salt River Project Agricultural Improvement and Power District, or SRP, at the northwest corner of 107th Avenue and Camelback Road within the City of Glendale's Camelback Ranch Spring Training Facility. Currently, right now in the city of Phoenix, a subdivision is being constructed called Camelback Ranch, directly north of the city's spring training facility. During the SRP's design um, of the power distribution facilities for that development, they discovered that existing facilities on the spring training facility were not located in an easement. So they are requesting that the city grant an easement for these existing facilities, um, which are vital to the development to the north. So this action will close the gap in their easement. That concludes my presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Council members, are there any questions on this item? Seeing none, do I have a motion? Yes, Vice Mayor, I move approval of ordinance number 020-03. Thank you. And a second from Council Member Yu. So we have a motion from Council Member Tomachoff and a second from Council Member Yu to approve the recommended action. I will take a roll call vote. Council Member Aldama, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Yu, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Malnar, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Tomachoff, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Turner, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. The motion passes unanimously. We will move on to item 27. Ms. Bauer, would you introduce the item? Ordinance number 020-04, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, authorizing the execution of an irrigation easement in favor of Salt River Project Agricultural Improvement and Power District located at 6678 West Thunderbird Road and directing the city clerk to record a certified copy of the ordinance. Vice Mayor and Council Members, this is a request for City Council to waive reading beyond the title and adopt an ordinance granting a new irrigation easement in favor of Salt River Project Agriculture Improvement and Power District, or SRP, at Thunderbird Road, east of 67th Avenue. Currently, we have a commercial development being constructed 
at 6678 West Thunderbird Road called Legacy Center. As part of Legacy Center's improvements, they will be piping an SRP irrigation ditch. Currently, SRP does not have an easement for this facility. So this action will grant them an easement within the city's right of way so that they can legally access and maintain their facilities. This concludes my presentation, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Chapin. Council members, are there any questions on this item? Seeing none, do I have a motion? Uh, Vice Mayor? Yes. Uh, I move that we adopt and approve ordinance number 020-04 as presented. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion by Council Member Malnar and a second by Council Member Tomachoff to approve the recommended action. I will now take roll call vote. Uh, Council Member Aldama, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Yu, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Malnar, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Tomachoff, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Turner, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Mayor votes aye. Motion passes unanimously. We will now move on to item 30, um, which Mr. Stoddard will introduce. Council selection of Vice Mayor. Vice Mayor, members of the council, this is your opportunity to nominate a member from amongst this group to serve as the Vice Mayor for the next calendar year as required by the charter and your council guidelines. With that, Vice Mayor, I turn it back to you. Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion for the- Yes, Vice Mayor. Yes. Uh, it's my honor to nominate Council Member Ray Malnar as our new Vice Mayor. Do we have a second? Second. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, the nominations are closed. Um, are there any comments or suggestions? Seeing none, well, I will move on to a roll call vote. Council Member Aldama, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Yu, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Malnar, how do you vote? Aye. You better vote aye. Uh, Council Member Tomachoff, how do you vote? Aye. Council Member Turner, how do you vote? I'd like to explain my vote. Yes. As many of you will remember, I've been an advocate for us rotating the uh, vice mayor position through the council. I'm happy to see that we have really actually developed a pattern of that, and I give my congratulations to our new, apparently, Vice Mayor Malnar. And with that, I vote aye. And the vice and the vice current vice mayor votes aye. Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, you are the newly elected vice mayor. Thank you. You're welcome. I think. Okay, we now open this portion up for citizen comments. Council makes this opportunity available to citizens to bring forward information and business that is not included on the printed agenda. Council can only act on matters that are on the printed agenda, but may refer to the matter to the city manager for follow-up. If you're unable to speak from the podium, please notify the city clerk and take a seat in the front row. A portable microphone will be brought to you when your name is called. Um, I'm going to take this out of order a little bit upon advice of one of senior management. I don't remember which one. I still have a few cards left, yellow cards left, on the annexation item. So before I move to the blue cards, is there anyone who filled out a yellow card who still wishes to speak? Great. Whoop, 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 whoop. I spoke too soon. Oh, that's Todd Knight. Todd, I thought Todd spoke. He spoke earlier. All right, so I'll, there is no one who filled out a yellow card who wishes to speak. I'll now move to the regular citizen comment cards, and we'll begin with Bill Dembski. Is he here? No. He left. David Men Medat, I'm going to murder your name, Mednansky. It's three syllables, yes. My name is David Manowski. I live in Glendale in the Barrel District uh, next to the Glen Lakes Golf Course. And uh, I believe you all received an email from me about uh, what the citizens intend to do about this issue uh, as far as legally goes. Uh, I understand, though, from um, Councilman Turner that you don't take that seriously yet. So I'd like to tell you that uh, how I found out that we do have uh, an ability to 
file a complaint on this and we'll survive a motion to dismiss, is from a person who you all know, I think, fairly well, Cho Villasenor. And uh, <clears throat> the issue of equitable servitude uh, has, it's an, an evolving area of law, and uh, Joe, when he was with uh, the mayor of uh, Phoenix, uh, he watched how that was evolving and was on information that he gave me that uh, I saw that we do have a, a case here. And so, therefore, since you know this person and since he is providing the pathway for this, I would urge you to contact him before this goes into a confrontational thing in court because nobody wants to be in court. And if you, uh, if you don't want to do that, then, uh, well, that's your choice. But uh, I just wanted to provide that information from you to show you that we're not just bringing some th information or pulling something off the internet to think that we can do something about this and have no validity to it. So thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Uh, I realize I'm taking this out of order and I'll have to go back and conclude I'll some. Con I'm going to continue with the comments, but then I'll go back. Just let you know that I'll go back to the business that I ignored. Okay. Um, Phil Erickson. Please state your name and where you live or the district in which you live, sir. Uh, my, name, my name is uh, Phil Erickson and I live in the Barrow District. And I live on the uh, 51st and Northern area. And uh, I was uh, really surprised uh, that the uh, Glen Lakes was taken off the agenda for tonight. Uh, I had some uh, other comments I wanted to make, but with them being off the agenda, I'd like to uh, uh, take this message. I'd like you to take uh, a look at what uh, you're forcing the citizens uh, surrounding the Glendale Lakes area. They got a development that's designed by the city. The land is to be sold for $6.5 million originally to be 177 homes, then dropped to 173, then amended to 165, which was never put to a public vote through the council on there. Uh, at the last meeting on there, it, the amendment was uh, brought up to the, uh, uh, to be voted on at the next meeting once the uh, uh, sales agreement was uh, rectified. The development of the community is not compatible with the surrounding areas. It's high density. There are many issues that you should have taken into consideration before this was passed. Increase in traffic is going to be a huge problem. The effect on the environment and how it will affect the economic and welfare of the citizens in the area, along with their safety. These are issues that should have been addressed by the uh, council and that the before a sales agreement was approved. Uh, members of the council and city uh, officials and that there, uh, take a moment and visualize with me this development being proposed and built next door to you, not necessarily your uh, district, but built next to you. What would your reaction be along with your neighbors and the citizens of the surrounding area? Glendale citizens voted their option at the last neighborhood meeting and it was a resounding no to the development of this housing development. Give us back our green space and our Glendale, uh, Glen Lakes uh, golf course. You can still stop this transaction, but it's up to you. It's up to you. The citizens of uh, Save Glen Lakes Golf Course, they're ready to move forward with additional uh, Mr. Erickson, you're going to have to conclude. I just want to thank you for your, for your time. Thank you, sir. Jane Bachman.
Jane Bachman of the Barrel District. The January 7th rezoning meeting on Glen Lake's property did not go as expected. Since the video, since the meeting was not videotaped, I will relate some of the highlights. The 90 re residents who attended meeting two of the rezoning meeting were vocal in expressing their anger over losing Glen Lakes. This meeting number two was a do-over as residents found the first meeting to be not informative. Mr. Phelps kindly agreed to having a, the second meeting for residents with a format of a presentation and a question and answer session. However, this, at this meeting, this group of residents disagreed with a format that would involve breaking into small groups at stations. When planning administrator Lisa Collins proposed stations, immediately there were shouts of no stations throughout the room. Residents wanted an open forum where everyone can share information, and that's what happened. From then on, residents spoke freely and at length that they wanted to keep the golf course. They did not want the development. Captured on tape was a tweet with a resident shouting, we want that golf course. We don't want that development. We need the right mayor to lead the town. And this was not just a regional issue. One Saguaro leader pledged the support of 1,000 residents for Glen Lakes. He said those resident, those 1,000 would vote against the mayor's re-election. This group of 90 residents were fed up. They were not about to go through the city's prescribed mo motions. These residents expressed their opinions about keeping the golf course, about the process the city has used to get rid of it. They did not hold back. It's a done deal, was shouted out more than once. This was the first meeting ever where people spoke as long as they wanted to get their points across. Credit is due to staff, Lisa Collins and Don Bessler, for allowing this open communication. They remained respectful of, of residents throughout, and they did not become irate or dogmatic or try to squelch the residents' comments. This was a forum of give and take, but it was the people who seized the moment. Residents finally had their say. Now we read the planning's public participation report. It says that number one, residents want to keep the golf course. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Stella Griazzo. Good evening, I'm Stella Griazzo from the Ocotillo District. A few weeks ago, I read where there was a council meeting in April of 2017. And some of the comments by the council member were, um, well, that they voted against high density. Then uh, some other comments made, rental properties do not enhance the stability of any community. Those who rent typically do not invest their time or interest in the community. So how does the pending built for rentals on 51st and Olive upgrade the city of Glendale? And then how will the high density development on 51st Avenue and Northern upgrade the city of Glendale? So other comments that were made in this article or meeting where are the developments that would enhance Glendale's reputation as a desirable community, <clears throat> community to live, work, and play? I don't see it happening. Glendale has the highest poverty rate among all valley cities. Uh, let's see here, what else is being said? It doesn't say much about how we value ourselves or our community if we are continually willing to settle just because whatever is proposed eliminates another vacant parcel. So I know you can't answer, but these are easy. Uh, you talk about low, medium, and high density. What are the number of homes for low, medium, and high density? I'm not really sure what that is. And so, you know, a lot of you call this progress, it's gonna happen, I call it destruction of our city. Thank you. Thank you. There being no further speaker cards, I will go, oh, 
Boy, we have people just jumping out of everywhere tonight. <clears throat> Mr. Wilfong, please state your name for the record and either your address or the district in which you live. Yeah, my name's Warren Wilfong, Akatillo District. I'm on the Planning Commission. I'm on the Code Review Committee. I'm speaking here as a resident today. The residents have access to a lot of books, code books. This is the general plan book. If the general plan and the code books aren't followed by staff, how can the residents follow it? I mean, I'm completely lost. When I read the general plan, which was adopted in September 30, 2016, three years in, four years in, we are already not following the 2040 plan. It clearly states that the City of Glendale adopts the City of Glendale general plan envisioned Glendale 2040 in its entirety and generally described. Clearly states that, okay, the City of Glendale adopts it, so the City of Glendale has to follow it, am I correct? So when this acreage of the Glen Lakes came up, which is 42 acres, which is considered a major amendment, all of a sudden, this parcel got split up to three parts, so it becomes a minor am amendment. How is a resident supposed to do something like that? So the process I hear is, well, we've done it in the past. Well, is that acceptable? Is that, the, is that what we do? Is now we do go from the plan and we just do whatever we want? Because we've done it in the past? Doesn't mean we've done it once, we have to do it every time. And then the, the other one I heard was, well, it's city property. Well. There we go again, we're changing the plan. It said right here, the city of Glendale is gonna adopt it. The city of Glendale needs to follow this plan. That's the way I look at it. All of a sudden we're changing the rules again. It's, it's like every book we have, we change the rules. I've found it in other books. And it's not really so much the book is at fault, it's the staff that's doing it. And for what reason? The only reason I can think of is because of money. And nobody here is following the organization chart. It clearly states citizens are on top, and nobody, or I would say, I can't say nobody, several of you are not listening. None of them wants this plan that's being presented to them at Glen Lakes. Nobody. I have not heard one say, person say, this is great, let's put it in. You're, 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 you know, you're listening, but I don't think you're hearing them. And that, like I said, if we're gonna have an organization chart, we should have a dollar sign on top, because that's what's pushing this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilfong. Seeing no further cards, don't do this to me. Nobody else has a card, right? Okay. I will move on to items that I neglected to cover prior to citizen comments. Do I have a motion for a future workshop and executive session? Vice Mayor. Yes. I move that we hold the next regularly scheduled City Council workshop on Tuesday, January 28th, 2020 at 12.30 p.m. right here in the City Council Chambers to be followed by an executive session pursuant to Arizona Revised Statutes uh, 38-431.03. Thank you. Set, and we have a second from <laughs> Council. Everybody's just, <laughs> just, <laughs> I won't say anything. I apologize <laughs> if I interrupted you on your last yeah. meeting as vice mayor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not making it easy. All right, I have a motion from Council Member Turner and a second from Council Member Tomachoff. Uh, all those in favor, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Seeing none, uh, the motion carries. Um, now I know there was one other thing, wasn't there? Council, Council comments. comments. Council comments. Yes, of course. Uh, we will now have council comments and we will begin with council member Aldama. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, just a couple announcements. Uh, reminding uh, the Alcatel District residents of Coffee with the Cop on January 15th at 8 o'clock a.m. Location 6514 West Bethany Home Road at Acon Donuts. Uh, please join your uh, police officers in sharing with them your concerns and getting some information from them. Also, uh, save the date 
for Saturday, February 1st, 2020 from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. for the Full Moon Lantern Fest. Uh, celebrate the first Full Moon Lantern Festival in historic downtown Glendale. This event brings in the year of the rat during the first cycle of the moon for 2020 in downtown Glendale. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you. Council Member Yu, do you have any comments? No, I, I'll just thank you for your service as vice mayor. It's a, it's a great ending tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah I went down in flames, yes. Uh, Council Member Melnard, do you have any comments? Yes, thank you. I would also like to add my thanks to you for your service as, uh, as vice mayor. And I want to thank this council for entrusting me uh, with this position as vice mayor. Uh, I'm, I'm honored uh, to serve, and I, I promise that uh, I'll do the best that I can to the best of my abilities. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Councilmember Tomachoff. Yes, Vice Mayor, I do have some comments, and thank you, Mr. Wolfong, for your comments. This has been rattling around in my brain since uh, Mr. Short brought it up. Um, I believe at the December 10th meeting when we, we voted to move forward with the purchase and sale agreement um, with a couple of amendments. And... I, I absolutely agree that this, this is a publicly owned asset. Um, and because it's a city owned, it's city, it's owned by the public. It's not owned by the, us, it's not owned by staff, it's owned by you. Um, and even if we have in the past broken it up into smaller pieces so we can get around doing a major general plan amendment, I believe we should be held to a higher standard even than a regular developer. And I, if we need to do a major general plan amendment, I don't, I'm not an expert, I don't know whether we do or we don't, but based on, and I did look that up in the general plan, and, and to my eyes, my untrained eye, I think that we probably do. And ethics and integrity matter. People, this is why people don't trust government, honestly. So uh, we, we, I don't wanna play a game of hide the nut with residents. If we need, if, if a general plan amendment, a major general plan amendment is what's called for here, then that's what we should do. So I wanna put my comments on the record that, that we should be held to the highest of standards here with what we're doing. And this is these kind of things, whether it's okay and whether we've done it in the past, okay, but this is why people don't trust government. So I, I wanna go on record of saying that we really need to at least make sure that we dot all our I's and cross our T's, and if we're supposed to do a major general plan amendment, then let's do it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Tomashoff. Councilmember Turner, any comments? Oh, you can imagine I might. Thank oh, you. Oh, God, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, first off, I appreciate the, uh, the support for the concept of, of this general plan amendment actually being a major general plan amendment. And I, I do agree that to, to my eye and to uh, that it is that, and that's the way we ought to do it. If we can't deal you know, if we can't do it the hard way, if it's the right way, then we shouldn't be doing it at all. And uh, I think that it's, uh, I think that's what we ought to be looking at here. Um, now the purchase and sale agreement at one point was gonna come back tonight, so I had some comments at that time, and um, most of those I'll spare you of, but I will say that having attended the public meetings, um, I know that representations were made to the, to the, the community that attended. We discussed those at our at our uh, December 10th meeting, talked about them specifically, asked to get some of them included in the purchase and sale agreement, but we we were told that no, 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 the zoning process is where that comes in and that'll be stipulations and zoning. And I'm talking about things like making sure that, the, that we require the developer to live up to the commitment what we made, that we would see that it was taken care of until the sale closed and that we would require the developer to see that that, that uh, landscape there was kept green and the trees were kept alive until such time as it developed. And another one that we promised is that the park would be developed and completed in the first phase so that if, develop, if construction got stalled, the neighbors would have a park there. And we also represented to the community that the, they would be getting some green space preserved to compensate them for the loss of the the major, the 40 acres of green space, but really as it turns out, we're getting little if any extra green open space that wouldn't be required of the developer anyway. So there's really not, there's little if anything that's actually there to, to compensate and protect them. And, but 
So as I, I was saying, these are things that we were told, oh no, that'll be in the zoning process. Well, the zoning agenda is posted and the staff report is out and there's no stipulations suggested by staff to protect the neighborhood for the developer not keeping the property you know, green and alive until such time as construction begins. There's nothing in there that requires the developer to, to uh, develop the park in the first phase or that the park be completed before um, the model homes are open or anything like that would it protect the neighborhood um, or that, uh, you know, any of the other stipulations that probably should be included. So now it means it's left to either the neighborhood neighbors to get out there and demand those or for the planning commission to demand those. And the, and the planning commission wasn't out at the meetings to know what's been promised. So I just want to, as you can probably tell, it's very frustrating and I feel like we, and Really, you know, it's in the words of Harry Truman, the buck stops here. The buck stops with us. And if we're going to tolerate this, then we're the ones that have to be accountable for it and that should be held accountable for it. If we're not gonna hold our management and staff to it, then we need to be held accountable to it. So I'm frustrated about that. Now, moving on to better things. Uh, well, not entirely better, but um, I really do want to thank the boards and commissions members, those that were here tonight to be sworn in and those that didn't make it but still serve. The board and commission process, when we use it correctly, is, is instrumental to the functioning of, of our government and we need their advice and I deeply appreciate the work that they've done and, uh, and uh, I just wanted to express that. I am um, deeply saddened that uh, there was a loss of life in my district in a, due to a fire in a, uh, an apartment just in the last few days. So I wanna take a moment to remind all of you present, anybody watching, make sure you have smoke detectors, make sure you check the batteries. Um, the house fires happen so much quicker now because of the material that's used in construction and in furnishing that you don't have minutes to get out of your home. You have seconds and you need to be, you need to hear that smoke alarm. So please, for your sake, for your children's sake, and for your neighbor's sake, if you live in an apartment complex, make sure your smoke detector's working. And then lastly, I would like to remind you all that the 57th, speaking of volunteerism in our community, the 57th annual Glendale Arts Can Council Juried Art Show um, the juried portion of the show opens up tomorrow and uh, from 10 to 5 daily, every day of the week through January 26th, the last Sunday of the month. So it's a wonderful show. And uh, if you go out to Suara Ranch Park in the uh, fruit packing gallery there, uh, you'll, you're in for a good time. It's a great show and uh, it's at a great setting and in a great building. So with that, I will conclude my remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of very short things. Again, I want to welcome White Claw, uh, Mark Anthony Brewing um, to the city of Glendale and specifically to my district. Um, again, I cannot overstate how important this development is and it acts as a catalyst for many more good things that you will see happening in Glendale. Um, the mayor and I attended Governor Ducey's State of the State was interesting, his focus seemed to be on education, veterans, and DPS. So I'm sure we'll be hearing more about those items in the future. Uh, I did not attend the Glen Lakes meeting. And I prefer the format of the meeting that, that the second meeting that was held. But what I do not prefer and I do not like is disrespect and rudeness on the part of citizens, and that's what I heard about. People were downright disrespectful, rude, and nasty. Now, I've been through um, land development actions. My favorite one is Stonehaven. We had a thousand petition signatures. We had a lot of people that were opposed to the amendments proposed for Stonehaven. And not once did they behave in the fashion that I heard about that happened at this Glen Lakes meeting. And I think some apologies are owed, especially hearing from Ms. Bachman that staff behaved themselves and were respectful to all and yet you as citizens couldn't afford that same respect to staff. It's all right to disagree, we all can disagree. 
and often do. But we should do so respecting one another, and that did not happen. Uh, lastly, I want to thank this council for providing me the opportunity to be vice mayor. It's been a kick. I haven't been your typical vice mayor, as you might have noted tonight. Um, but nevertheless, we managed to get through this meeting. And uh, with that, there being no further business before the council tonight, I would like to thank everyone for attending tonight's meeting. And with no objection from this council, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>